Always nice to finally put this back on again. After four very long months, the National Hockey League will return this week. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wolf Gator Entertainment Channel. I'm Wally. I know it's been a while. Um, I think the last video I posted was about the draft, if I remember correctly. The draft lottery, that's the word. That was my last video. Anyway, so th this week the National Predators will return to the ice against the Arizona Coyotes, but first they got a game against the Dallas Stars, and just kind of like get the get the get the juices flowing, get everyone warmed up. So I want to you know take a chance, you know, look at the season that the Preds had, and look at the postseason that the could Preds could possibly have. Um, I'm gonna do that here on this channel right now. So, so first off, let's let's start with the season that the Preds had. They played 69 games. Uh, of their normal 82 game season, and the <laughs> decided it wanted to swoop in, and the season got postponed. And then a couple couple months later, they come out and say what they want to do with the season, and you know said that there's going to be a 2014 playoff. Well, the Preds were in the playoff position when it all ended. Um, I they were not they were not, they were not having a good season. Um, so many players were underperforming. Uh, a couple, couple players were injured, like Victor Arvidsson. Uh, he got injured again in the game against the Blues after getting cross-checked in the back. He had a, he was out for a little bit. Um, Philip Forsberg led the team in goals with 21 goals, which is not great for a team that's supposed to have this high-end talent like Duchesne and Ryan Johansson, Philip Forsberg, Victor Arvidsson, uh, Kyle Turris. Um, and then on the other, on the flip side. Kyle Turris, uh, Ryan Johansson, and Matt Duchesne, all three of them had decided to have a not a good season, especially Ryan Johansson, and he knows it. Um, he was called out by the GM, uh, Dave Poyle, and uh, he said it himself. He's like, you know what, I gotta have better, I gotta play better, and I gotta prove that I'm this $8 million player that I am. And I could not agree more, because he does, and he was not that great this year. Um, our defense stumbled a little bit. Ro uh, Roman Yossi pretty much dragged the Preds to where they were. I mean, he had a spectacular season. I think he set a franchise record in points by a defenseman, um, which is awesome. Um, Matthias Ekholm was, a, was good this year. Ryan Ellis, when he was in the lineup, was good this year. He was out with an injury. Uh, everyone remembers the, the Winter Classic game against the Dallas Stars where he got injured. Um, Dante Fabro didn't was not great this year, and then the bottom pair of defensemen was just it was a constant cycle because sometimes it'd be Yannick Weber, sometimes it'd be Matt Irwin, sometimes it'd be Dan Ham Hughes, and then at the end of this, at the end of the the regular season, which is what I guess I can call it now, I think it was Corbini, Corbinian Holzer, and uh, God, what's that guy? Uh, he used to be Canadian. He was in the AHL for most season with the Milwaukee Admirals. I can't remember his name right now, but. That's who it was by the end of the season. So they had a they didn't had a not so great year. They battled with injuries just like everyone. And then Pecorino just he started out solid, and then that goal by Matt Kachuk. For some reason this season, that goal that Matt Kachuk scored in overtime just is what I point to as the Preds breakdown this year. Because um, I think they had, had a six game winning streak up until that point. And they were about to win, and then they had a. And then the Flames scored with a couple seconds left, I think, and then Makachuk scored with like a second left in the in overtime. So, I mean, that was pretty much the downfall. Uh, Pecorino had a terrible season. UC Soros was okay in the middle of the season, then he got really, really good by the end of the season. I think he was playing more than Pecorino at one point. You know, that's where the Preds sit right now. Um, so they drew, I believe, 60. But they drew the Arizona Coyotes, and um, I think that has the potential of being a really good matchup. Um, it's going to be, to people who don't normally watch hockey, it's going to be boring as hell. Um, because I think it's going to be a really defensive series. Um, especially if the two goaltenders can show up. Uh, that being either Peck Arena or UC Saros. I personally think it should be UC Saros, because apparently Pecs haven't looked all that good in uh, training camp. Um, I think the other day I was watching the, the uh, white-gold game. The, you know, the scrimmage they're having. I think Peck gave up four goals on, like, 13 shots or something like that. And UC let up one on 17. Something, something, something crazy like that. Um, I think the game ended 4-1, but whatever. Um, I think UC, UC should start. And then on the other side is going to be Darcy Kemper or um, 
on Tiranta. That's a hell of a goalie. That's a hell of a goalie matchup if both teams' goalies can play to what they're expected to play to. Um, I don't really know. I don't really have any expectations of anyone um, in particular. Uh, other than Roman Yossi, I hope he just goes off. Um, and, I, and, and I hope that the, the players can feed off of his energy and, um, you know, put away a couple goals. Because it's is not like a normal seven-game series. It's a five-game series. And it's... It, it, it's not going to be... You're not going to have time to settle in either. I mean, yeah, practice game, and you get five games to win. Um, you have to win three, uh, which I think the Preds have the capabilities of doing. Um, I don't really see any huge scoring threats on the Arizona Coyotes other than Taylor Hall and Phil Kessel. I know Nick Schmaltz had a pretty good year. Um, defensively, maybe uh, OEL can do something. Um but I think Roman Yossi can go toe to toe for with Oliver Ekman Larson. Um, really, the biggest the, I think the if they split up the the uh, Hall and Kessel, I think the Preds will have a little bit of trouble. But they have two solid defense pairs. Um, if even even if Dante Fabro isn't as good as he should be, which I I don't really have that high of expectations. Really, it's just his first full season in the NHL, I believe. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is. But I think the Preds have two solid defense pairs that could shut down Hall and Kessel. And I think if you could shut down either of those, both of those guys, really, um, they, then I think they'll be okay. Um, last I saw that the Preds were going to go back to the uh, Jofa line. And they were going to keep the Smith turret, no, the Smith Bonino Grimaldi line, which we need to come up with a name for that. Bones can definitely... I mean, that's a good shutdown line, and they can prevent, and they can produce offense. Um, I think the second line is Duchesne, Turris, and McGranland. Uh, so if you have the Jofa line and the uh, Turris, Duchesne, Granlund line, those two lines can go full cylinder. They can outscore anyone. Um, Arvidsson could put it in the net. Uh, Forsberg could put it in the net. We know Joe Hansen can do it in the net. He's done it in the past. He did it in Columbus. Um, and if not, he can feed Hartson and Forsberg. Um, apparently, the first power... The power play is what needs to get going. I'll get to that in a minute. But Duchesne can score. Turris can score. If not, he can at least feed the puck. And we know Granlin can score. So those first two lines, if they can just get something going, get the chemistry going have the, 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 the willpower to get going, that I think that the Preds have a pretty good chance of outscoring the Coyotes. Because if you can have two solid lines to their two solid players, I think it's I think the Preds could win this series pretty easily. Um, now, the power play and the penalty kill. The special teams this year have just flat out off. Uh, the penalty kill, especially against a uh, team like the Canucks, who I think we may have killed off like two total, and gave up like five or six power play goals. I know in one game we give up four power play goals to the Canucks. Um, if they could just if they could shape up on the penalty kill, if they could shape up on the power play, because they were abysmal on the power play. For the past two years it's been an issue. Um, if they could shape up the special teams, I think they'll be fine. Um, I, I like that second unit a lot more than I like the first unit, but um, like I said, if the Joe line can get it going, I think the first... Uh, the key is Johansson. It really is. Um, Roman Yossi's on that first power play, I believe, um, and he, he can get anything going. I mean, he could, he could score in his sleep, uh, but if they get Johansson going, I think this is uh, open and shut, um, and he was a huge part of the, the uh, cup run, um, and it was a huge loss when we lost him, so, you know, there's that. Um, the, bottom, the bottom lines will be interesting to see what they do, because uh, right now, I think they have a lot of good players that they can put there. Uh, Yarn Crow and Sissons are for sure going to be there. Um, that's a tough fourth line to play against because Yarn Croak plays hard and Sissons plays hard, and they're part of the penalty kill, so you know they're defensively reliable. Um, if you put Austin Watson there, that's just it's a defensive line as I've ever seen, um, and they can produce offense. And Sissons and um, Watson have good chemistry because uh, the year I think they played the Avalanche, it was Benino, Sissons, Watson. Uh, it was a real good line. Uh, I think Yarn Croak being either in the middle or on the wing, uh, they could do. Just the same. I mean, I think Yarn Crook's just almost not quite as good as Benino is in terms of scoring. I think he's better, than, just as good as Benino on the defensive side of the puck. Um, so, look, man, it's all up in the air. I have no idea what's going to happen this year. Um, I would like to say the Preds are going to go all the way. 
Um, I think they can beat the Coyotes. Um, after that, it's, it depends on who they draw. I think they can beat any of the West, uh, the Pacific Division teams if they do go forward. I think that the Pacific Division is just a weaker division. I mean, all, I think all seven uh, uh, Central Division teams got in. Um, and, and then, I th what was it, uh, five of the Western, I uh, know, four. Four? No. Five. Five of the Western Conference teams got in. The Pacific Division teams got in. So, um, if they can draw a Pacific Division team, I think they'd be okay. Um, if they draw a Western Conference, uh, Central Division team, God, I have to, I'm not going to edit any of this at all. Um, then it'll be different. But I think they have the ability to go all the way, uh, as long as they can get things, the ball rolling fast. Um, the, my biggest concern is Pecorino and or UC Saros. I hope they start Saros. I would not be surprised if they start Rene in the first game. I think if he lets the two soft ones, you got to pull him. And then he just gives the Saros the reins. Um, he, he, Saros can do it. I have no, I have no trust as you to Saros. Um, uh, Pekka's done it in the past to a certain point and then just imploded. Just couldn't play hockey to, to an extent. Um, the one saving grace here is that Pekka is really good at Edmonton. Uh, that might be just because he's owned the Edmonton Oilers. It's not maybe because he's owned the ice there. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out for Pex. But, um, yeah, I'm excited that hockey's back. I'm excited to get to, get to put this on and yell at TV again. It'll be fun. Um, I've, what, I've, uh, I've had to find something to occupy my mind. And I found, and lately it's been Marvel. So it's, it, which is fun. But I'm glad hockey's back. So, uh, if you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. I don't know if I'm going to do a Preds fan reaction after, or the Preds, post-game analysis, I think is what I called it. Analysis after every game, the Preds PGA. Um, we'll see. Uh, my school is going to start it up soon, um, so I might do it in the first couple weeks, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully they make it past five games. That'd be really awesome if they did that. So, peace out, party people. <laughs>